parents of infants and toddlers are frequently asking me a mouthful of questions about pacifiers. So let me see if I can pacify everyone's concerns with a few tips on this interesting habit. First of all, babies have a need for sucking as a means of calming and quieting themselves when a mother's breast can't be available. Although don't introduce a pacifier to quiet your baby until breastfeeding's in full swing or it may confuse a baby learning to breastfeed. If you want your baby to use one, offer it at nap time and bedtime, but not to replace or delay meals and don't force your baby to take a pacifier if she or he doesn't want it. Never use a pacifier as a substitute for taking the time to communicate with your baby or use it to silence your baby so that they can't communicate with you. If you're going to use a pacifier, select one that's a sturdy one-piece model like this one with ventilation holes and a base or shield that's about one and a half inches across so your baby can't put it completely into his or her mouth and choke. Don't tie a string or ribbon around the pacifier since this may get caught around baby's neck. You don't really need to be concerned about persistent pacifier use, however, until a baby's permanent teeth start to come in. Since then, the pacifier can affect the shape of the mouth and how teeth are lining up. If nonetheless you're interested in having your toddler stop sucking on the pacifier after a year or so of age, I've got some suggestions learned from other parents. First, restrict the use of that pacifier to your child's room and perhaps limit its use to naps and bedtimes as a gradual wean. Second, let peer pressure do its work. When your child's friends aren't using their pacifiers in public, then neither will your child. And don't call attention to the habit, although you can certainly distract your child if you see them going for it. On the other hand, feel free to praise your child if they're getting by without using that pacifier. As another idea is consider wrapping up the pacifier and giving it to a friend's new baby and having a gift at the new baby's house for your child in exchange. Finally, never wean a pacifier at times of increased stress for your young child, such as the arrival of a new sibling or a family move. So that hopefully, tips like these will wean you of your concerns the next time you're worried that your baby will end up going to college with his or her pacifier. This is pediatrician Dr. Lewis First from the University of Vermont Children's Hospital reminding you to always be first with your kids.